everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. This week I am going to be finishing up my Felicity Round Gown project, which is in the back right here. And specifically, I am going to be making the pinner apron for this. So pinner apron is an apron that pins to your bodice. Basically this upper portion, it doesn't have any straps or anything connected to it. It actually pins with little straight pins to the bodice underneath it. And then the rest of the apron goes and ties behind the waist, around the waist in the back. So with this pinner apron specifically, it is really quite wide. It's going all the way past the like center seam basically just a little bit so that it'll wind up really going to like here on me and uh, that's going to be kind of the biggest consideration as I'm putting this together. The other part that I find interesting is that it has this little point of the pinner apron front that actually goes over the waistband. So this apron skirt part does have a waistband attached all the way around like a flat waistband and then this is applied over and it is actually top stitched in place. So I have this fabric right here which is a very lightweight, maybe a little on the sheer side if I'm being perfectly honest, but it's a very lightweight poly cotton blend fabric that I got in the fabric district in Los Angeles from LA Alex specifically. And I thought that this was a pretty good like fake dupe print. You know, it's basically the closest thing that I could find even looking at countless things online for the last couple of months. This was actually the closest I could find other than going the spoon flower route and paying like 20 something bucks a yard. Uh, I think this was about $4 a yard. So I figured that was a lot happier of a number. So this is hopefully going to be a very, very simple project. I am hoping, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm hoping that I can actually get this out of one panel going across like this is the panel it's 60 inches wide I believe and so it does have quite a lot of stretch I mean obviously and by stretch I mean it is wide not that it has any stretch this has no stretch but it is obviously like it should fit around and go over the pocket hoops I don't know why I'm showing you to you on me when she's right here but it should fit around and go over the pocket hoops and then it'll be gathered into the waistband right here and I think that will be just fine. So since the last video, I mentioned this in the last video, but since then I have sewn in the ruffle at the top of the neckline and I have also done the hem. So really this week the two things that absolutely, well three things actually, that absolutely have to happen. One is the apron, one is I'm going to be making little ribbon rosettes with little ribbon leaves that go on the sleeves right here. And the other thing is that I have to glue my shoes. I have American Duchess shoes that I'm going to be wearing, but these shoes, they fell apart almost instantly. Like, yikes, I was not happy and I contacted American Duchess and they did not respond nicely to me at all. But yeah, the sole has been peeling off of these shoes since like the second time that I wore them. So I'm pretty sure I've glued them before, but I have to glue them again because one of them, the sole is again peeling off the bottom. I also would like to touch up the paint on them just so you get an idea. First off, this is where the sole is peeling off. So you can see that right there coming away like a little lip. And also you can see it's not as bad on this one, I feel like, as it is on this one, but the white paint right here is really showing underneath. I painted these black, especially right there, geez. So yeah, I want to do a little touch up on that. Uh, Felicity with this outfit does wear her regular shoes, which are black with buckles. They don't have heels. She has super, super cute little green stockings that I don't have anything like that, unfortunately. But just so you can see, these are her stockings that go with this outfit. I love them. These shoes are actually from her summer outfit. But I love those stockings so much. And then if I have time after all of that, I also want to make a cap like this one. This cap, again, goes with her summer outfit. But I think that it looks very, very lovely. And I don't have anything like that. I think I only have one non 1780s cap like 1780s giant cap I think I only have one other 18th century cap and if I remember correctly it does not really fit right it's one that I purchased and it just doesn't really fit right so 
if I have time, I'm gonna do that as well. Now that said, I have three days until the first day of Comic-Con. Today is Tuesday, so I have tonight, tomorrow, and Thursday, and I also have two rehearsals in that amount of time for Singing in the Rain, my current show, and I also have to be looking for a job. So time is very, very limited. I don't know what all we'll get to, but also I might wear this on Sunday of Comic-Con instead of Friday, meaning that I could work on it in the evenings on Friday and Saturday after I get home from Comic-Con on those days. So we'll see how it goes, but let's dive in to the apron to begin with. All right, so I have all of the apron skirt pieces, as in not the top pinner portion, but the rest of it all cut out or actually ripped. I ripped all of this since it's just straight pieces. And basically there is a 47 inch long panel that is one panel across that will be the skirt. I realized that like the selvage on this fabric is actually so nice that I don't even have to hem the sides. So that's going to be really awesome. And then I was also able to rip the ties. At first I had ripped two ties thinking I was going to do the one full tie and then two half ties to tie around the back. And it just would not have produced like the length of Felicity's ties. So I've actually gone for three of these now. So now what I'm doing is I am seaming together the three of these. I'm not going to bother serging them because it's all going to get encased anyway. Because basically this is double the width plus seam allowance of how it will wind up. So it's going to wind up being folded like that at the top and then the bottoms obviously tucked in with seam allowance. So it'll be about just under two and a half inches wide because that's how I got all these measurements is I scaled like how big the apron is compared to her dress, how long it is, and how long her waistband is and everything, and then did that for my dress. So that's where I wound up with the 47 inches and how I wound up with just under two and a half inches for the width of the waistband. So yes, I'm going to seam all of these together and then, yes? Do you hear that? Somebody wants to say hi. So I'm going to seam all of these together and then I am going to gather up, you're done now? I'm going to gather up the top of the skirt and then the center that this apron skirt portion is gathered to, it's going to be probably like about 22 inches or so, basically a little bit more than half of my waist measurement because it will go just a little farther than halfway around. And then once that is attached to the center, you know, whatever portion it is, the rest of the ties of this, instead of treating them as tubes, felicities are actually like the fold goes away basically. So what I'm talking about is that it's all folded up here and then right here it actually separates so that the ties here we get a full width. See like that you get both sides and then there's a tiny little narrow hem. So that's what I'm going to do on mine as well. I'm going to narrow hem the ties that aren't part of the center right here whereas this part just gets folded and like you encase the skirt inside of it. So I'm gonna go do all of that now and I will show you what that looks like when it is done. So one little note that I have about her ties here, you'll notice that they have a little folded point where like this is a fold, basically the seam is encased on this side. And what's going on here is this is this side. So like it's kind of the front side, if you will, of the ties. I don't know that that matters a super ton, but I am doing the same thing on mine. So what I've done here is on that side, I have actually stopped my hem on like the turned hem for, I don't know, what is that? Like four and a half, five inches from the edge. And then this gets folded. So it's going to be folded like this so that those two raw edges meet. And then a seam gets sewn right in here. And then this is turned right sides out and it will wind up with this little point look. So the bottom portion of the apron is now done other than the hem and I wanted to show you the ties in a little more detail. So see they get like wide back here but it's nice and narrow and folded here and so it's kind of right as it ties and the knot where it now can be its wide self and then the points look like that 
when they are all finished. So I do obviously need to do the bib of the apron and I also need to do the hem of the apron, but both of those really involve me putting it on and that means putting the dress on and putting stays on and all that other stuff that I don't particularly want to do right now. So instead, let's turn our attention to some ribbon rosettes, do that first, and then I will get suited up in everything else. So let's talk about how ribbon rosettes work because it's really pretty simple. This is what we are aiming for here. I haven't tied it off so I have some adjustability in the center. But we're aiming for that and then there's going to be a leaf there as well. So this is made up of a 12 and a quarter inch long piece of ribbon. That was literally me just playing with one and seeing okay yeah, I need 12 and a quarter inches to go around and have seam allowance because that's the first thing that we do. We're just on the machine sewing the ends together, right sides together of this ribbon and that way it looks like this. Then I am running a hand sewing needle. Mine is with like a double width of thread, like two threads right here, but that really doesn't matter. But we are just going to run that through just quite near the edge here, and I want my stitches to be like approximately half an inch apart. It doesn't matter if they are exact, but I want them really quite large. because we are going to pull that up to look like that, where it's all dense. So once we pull all the threads up, we should get a little rosette look. Just like that. I'm using just plain one and a half inch wide ribbon from Joann's. To be honest, I wish this was a little bit wider. I also wish it was a little bit less shiny, but this is just like literally off a brand ribbon from Joann's and it was the closest thing that I had to the right color. I didn't go buy more. So once we have that all pulled up nice and tightly, we are just going to tie a little knot in the back and that will anchor our rosette. Now we're going to add the leaf. So the leaf is again very simple. We just have a narrower ribbon. This one I think is seven eighths inch wide, again from Joann's, and this is five and a half inches long. And we're just going to twist the edges. I did on all my ribbon edges, I always melt them by the way, just with a lighter. So this one melted very fast, but it doesn't matter because it's behind the back of the flower, so that's okay. But we are just going to fold these so that they overlap right there. And then this gets stuck onto the back of the flower and you want to make sure that you like the placement. I honestly I probably will press this seam down just a little bit with an iron so that it doesn't quite stick up as it is. So I think I'm gonna make it so that I can press that and not put it right over the ribbon, the leaf ribbon. So I like right there and then we just take our thread that is still connected and we can just do a few whip stitches to stitch that in place. None of those stitches show in the front, so that's great. And then just do a knot on the back. We can still use this same thread to go ahead and sew it onto the sleeve now. So to sew it onto the sleeve, we are just going to take our ribbon rosette with the leaf facing kind of outward here, and we're going to put it right over where we did our stitches in place on the sleeve. And then we are just going to sew a few tacking stitches. And then tie that knot off. And this is what they look like now that they're done. Got one here, one here. I do wish that they weren't so shiny and that the color was a little bit better of a match, but you know what? You gotta do what you gotta do when you are using stash. So now I think I'm gonna go ahead and pin the hem up based on where it looks like on here. The center obviously needs to go a lot more up than the sides because of the pocket hoops. And then I will put everything on and see how it looks and see how I need to pattern the top part of the pinner apron. The top part is going to be backed with muslin so I'm going to kind of make a mock-up of the muslin and then if that works I will also cut it out in the floral but we will get there you know once I put it on. By the way I also did already procrastinate putting on my stays by painting my shoes so my shoes don't have any white scuff marks anymore. They look very nice. 
So here is the bottom part of the skirt on I highline. I have pinned up the hem and I think I actually did it perfectly. Like looks really good. It looks wonky if you get too close right now because I just pinned up a really deep hem. So it's like four or five inches deep at some points and I obviously have to fold it over and probably cut off some excess as well since I was planning to do just like a small hem on this to be honest like on the machine but I don't know maybe I'll do a hand hem. But anyway so that has to be folded up some more but it looks pretty good. All I did was while it was on the form, I measured up from the bottom of the skirt to the bottom of the apron to make sure it was seven inches because scale told me that was what it should be. So now I have to do the pinner apron part and I hope that won't be too hard and I hope that will hide how diagonal this front piece is right here. So of course it's diagonal right here too because it's like there's barely any overlap right here and then there's like an inch here and there's way more even right there. So yeah if I ever wear this bodice without then I have a lot of things that I need to fix on this bodice front closure but with the pinner apron no one will know. So let's go figure out what that shape looks like. Just to show you what it is on her, hers is sitting up a little high right now. It should come down a little, but it is wider than the neckline here. And then it does come down to a point that goes just below the waistband. The waistband's like right here. So it goes just below the waistband. So I think that my mock-up is super, super close for this pinner apron. And I have actually now kind of squidged it into the way that I need it to be. So basically I did my mock-up here, which was... 12.75 inches across the top, 11 inches across the bottom, 13.5 inches in the center front, and 12 inches on the side here. And that included the seam allowance. And then I have folded in the seam allowance to try this all on. So folded in a half inch seam allowance on all sides. And what I'm finding here is that I wanted the top to be just a tiny bit wider than what I had it. So I've actually now taken away some of the seam allowance so that it's only a quarter inch seam allowance right here at the top or quarter inch folded in will be a quarter inch seam allowance. So that's what's going on right up here. And then down here, I actually folded up so that this part right here was a little bit shorter. I folded that up by, I think it's really only like, somewhere between an eighth and a quarter. I haven't actually looked at it yet. I just folded and pinned so that it would match the bottom of the waistband of the apron. So that is done there. And then the one other thing that I did, which kind of surprised me, was that I'd cut this straight across the top. But as you can tell, my neckline is actually not straight across because the way that it gets pinned, it winds up dipping down just a little bit. Now Felicity's neckline is straight across because there's no closure there. So I found that by having it straight across on the apron, it made that look very obviously dipped down. So I'm actually going to dip this down by, I think it's only about an eighth of an inch that I folded down, but I'm gonna dip it down just a little bit in the center to try to optical illusion that away. <laughs> so I think that this is the finished look here. I'll cut off the excess down here and right here. Uh, this I'm actually just going to make it have a quarter inch seam allowance by the time it gets to the top. So now I am going to use this to cut out the floral piece and then I'm going to put them right sides together and sew around all of the sides leaving a little gap probably on the side here maybe on the center but the point makes that a little bit harder but yeah I might actually if I do it down here I've got to stitch over this anyway so yeah I'll probably do it down here and that will be my gap to turn through I'll clip all my corners and then I will turn it right sides out and then yeah down here this is going to get top stitched to the apron and that's the apron done so let me go ahead and finish that really quickly so that's really frustrating. I turned this, like sewed this together, turned this out, started to press it, and my iron, which has been on the cotton setting this whole time, so like it ironed all of this fine on the cotton setting. I don't know if it like had a little flare up or something like that, but it melted part of this. Like all of a sudden I saw this side just kind of shrink up and the back wound up being basically bigger than this side and for example if I put this together right now there is a very large discrepancy over here that's how much it shrank up and actually it's really more than that because right now it's like I tried to press it and there's white 
showing on this side anyway, so it's not gonna work. So clearly I've gotta start this bit over. I have the option of either just cut out new completely and do, you know, half inch seam allowances everywhere around, which I think I'm gonna do. Like just use this as a half side and then, cause otherwise I'd have to unpick this whole thing and then use the muslin. It's just muslin, so like I've got more of it. So yeah, I'm just gonna recut this whole thing and redo this, not on the cotton setting. So I've cut out and created the new section now, but of course I wound up cutting it out out of part of the part that has like misprints on it. I've noticed this a few times in the pattern, but there's like the green from this dye print, however that works, that is like splattered in some areas and I didn't notice and I cut it out of that. So hopefully that won't be very noticeable, but now to attach it to the skirt. So my apron still needs the hem done by hand at the bottom, but otherwise it is done. Hopefully tomorrow I will have time to make that lace cap. So I will see you tomorrow. Okay, so let's talk about this cap. Now I was looking through my various like cap patterns, diagrams, etc. in all of my books, and it seems like the one that is closest to this is the 1760s through 1770s organza and lace cap that is in the first American Duchess book, the dressmaking book. This is page 114, just FYI, if you are looking for it. Now this one is a little bit different than Felicity's, uh, but Again, it's close. The main difference that I'm seeing in this is that this cap actually has an organza pleated ruffle around the band, whereas Felicity's does not. Felicity just has some ruffled lace around that. I also do wonder, honestly, if Felicity's cap winds up making up wider than the cap in here. So luckily I have a lot of this fabric so I can play around with it. I found this in my stash. I think this is called point d'esprit netting I want to say. It looks like that and it's a relatively close match to Felicity's except that she has little flowers on hers as well. So I'll do without the flowers, that'll be okay. And then I was also looking through my laces and trying to find a lace that would be pretty close to her lace right here. And I found two options. So one of the options is really quite close to her lace, but literally it's like the same width as her lace. And so I don't feel like that would make sense for my cap because of course we are scaling up. The other one, it's not as nice of a lace. Like it is kind of, you're just standard, more modern type feeling of lace. Oh, I just realized it's two tiers. Oh, it's three tiers. Oh, wait, maybe this won't work. I was thinking it was just this top tier. This top tier would work great, but with the other tiers behind this, maybe not so much. So, okay, I'm gonna go back to my stash and see what I have. And if I have to use that narrow lace, fine. Maybe I suppose what I could do is to do the ruffle that's in the pattern and then do the lace on top of that. That could be an option. And I am obviously going to be making this up as much as possible by machine because time. Speaking of time, I still have not decided what outfit I'm wearing when. I know I'm wearing Kirsten on Saturday. That's the part that I have decided because Saturday is my longest day, Kirsten is my most comfortable outfit, and I also know that Kirsten is just definitely not good enough to potentially enter into the cosplay competition on Sunday, which is something that I've been debating about doing back and forth. So I put out a poll on Instagram to ask you guys which one I should wear for the cosplay competition, and the majority of you so far at least have said the Sailor Sam outfit. I just wonder if it would be worth entering that at all because I feel like it doesn't necessarily look impressive. Like yes it has the embroidery, yes I did really pretty much like all of the details from her outfit. I just feel like it doesn't really look that impressive. And the other thing that I am taking into consideration here of why I'm thinking about wearing Felicity on Sunday is that as I think I mentioned before I dyed my hair at the beginning of this week. I thought it would have faded to a closer to Felicity color by now but obviously it has not. So I ordered a wig yesterday that appears to be her color, but it's not getting here till Saturday, which means I would have to wear it on Sunday. Sunday would also give the opportunity of one more wash in the hopes that this tones down a little by then and I could use my own natural hair, which was my original intention. So I am definitely leaning towards wearing Felicity on Sunday. And the other thing that comes with that is that 
if I'm wearing Felicity on Sunday, that means I could potentially make up this cap on like Friday night. Probably not Saturday night, because Saturday night goes a little later at the con. But I could potentially make it up on Friday night or even bring it with me to the con and do some hand sewing while in a panel, which is, you know, another option. And that is making me want to make spats for Samantha before potentially tomorrow when I wear it. So if you remember going back to the Samantha video, which I will link up here if you have not seen it, I'll also link it down in the description, but I did not have like the proper footwear for Samantha. She has two-tone boots, they're black on the toe and heel, and then they're white with little pearl buttons in the rest of the boot. And I don't have any spats like that. I have really long white canvas spats with black buttons, but they're so long that they would take up the whole leg and I don't want that. So something else I was thinking, because they went really quickly together when I was making them for Samantha's winter outfit, which I will also link down below. I was thinking about making some quick spats, uh, probably also out of white canvas, because I think I have white canvas. If I don't have white canvas, this might all be for naught. But if I have white canvas or white thick material that will stand up on its own, which is why I was thinking canvas, then I think I might make some spats. They'll be a lot shorter than these. These were her winter ones. I think her, like, I don't know, her midi boot ones would probably be about this tall instead of this tall. But yeah, I might just make those up really quickly and slap on some buttons and put them on over just like my regular comfy walking shoes that I wear all the time uh, for tomorrow for wearing for the con. So I think I'm actually going to try to make these up first because I am leaning towards wearing Felicity on Sunday. And then I will do the cap either during panels or during the evening tomorrow. So you get a bonus project with this that has nothing to do with the 18th century because it's Edwardian. So enjoy this little bonus project. So it turns out I do not have any white canvas, so I'm going to attempt to do this with two layers of white twill. But I have the one from the winter set on right now. And what I've done is I've kind of pinned out a new shape. So this toe, hi Lion, this toe is gonna be just a little bit shorter and then it's going to curve down. Lion, I'm, I'm, I'm filming, so I'm careful with the pins. It's going to be a little bit shorter here, and it's actually going to go down further on the sides over here. You know, Lion, you're blocking all my light. And then likewise, up here on the back, it's going to cut away above the heel, or like not above, but basically the top of my shoe is right here, and I'm going to make it cut like this. So there still will be overlap to all the edges of my shoe. And then the obvious thing here is that I folded down a big chunk of it, so it's going to be significantly shorter. So and then of course the other thing is that it needs to have a scalloped edge so basically where the fold line is on this pattern it is going to scallop around the buttons like that and dip in so actually having the two layers is good because then I can make a seam there and make a facing basically for that scallop please forgive how sweaty and gross I look I have been just practicing my tap for singing in the rain and it is very hot and now I'm about to scoot off to a rehearsal where I'm going to tap for two and a half more hours in an unair conditioned building great so I have not had much progress much time to progress on the spats I have four pieces cut out out of a total of 12 that I need I think let's see three times two yeah 12 because there's three pieces, I need two layers of each piece, and then there's two spats. So um, I don't think these are gonna get finished. I do have kind of a thought of, well, if I wear Kirsten tomorrow instead of Saturday, then I can finish these up tomorrow evening and or tonight, and then decide, have a little longer to decide, which I want to enter into the competition, Samantha versus Felicity, and see like, oh, maybe I should, you know, start in the cap tonight or something, see if that gets finished first before these. Of course, I do have my Ivory Renoir boots that I could wear for Samantha. Those should be comfortable enough. They are just ivory and the entire rest of the outfit is white. And they're fully ivory instead of white with black toes and heels on the boots. So that is why I was like, last minute spats. Let's see if I can do it. I don't think I can do it. So yeah, um, I'll let you know what happens with the spats if I have the energy after tap rehearsal to maybe work on them more. 
but I kind of doubt that these are going to get finished tonight, especially. And I do want to get the cap cut out for tomorrow so that I could bring it with me and work on it during panels. So yeah, that way I can do the cap by hand while I'm sitting there. And it seems like it would make a lot of sense. And also I don't think it should be that hard to do by hand. I just need the pieces cut out and need to probably have a picture of the instructions or something in the book. So I'm going to go to tap rehearsal. I will see you later and let you know what happens. I'm back from rehearsal and I'm switching over to the cap. I think this bats are just not going to get done since I'm planning to wear Samantha tomorrow. So this cap is definitely larger across the back here than this pattern. This pattern is 10 inches across right here. And just looking at the way that this poofs out in the back, when I kind of like held a tape measure up to my head, it seemed like I needed 13 inches to get across that sort of size. So yeah, I'm going to do that. Also, I realized this it's elastic so that should be easy I guess to just do some elastic down there and then yeah I need to figure out I think this is a very different curve than we have here because that goes into a point whereas this is like definitely curved so we'll definitely have to play with the pattern a bit yeah it's wider down at the bottom than it is at the top as well so we'll play with the pattern a bit and uh, try to cut that out so I wound up changing this pattern quite a bit I did actually keep the length the same right here which is 14 and a half inches but this is seven inches wide on the fold so 14 inches and then this is a totally different looking pattern piece than this. So this is obviously a lot more like Felicity's cap than the one in the book. And then I also went through my stash and I found these two different flat laces. So this one is actually a vintage lace and then this one is just a modern lace. Both of them seem to be the right width and oddly enough they're both like almost identical length and the length seems to be enough that I can get a decent ruffle out of this. So I think what I might actually do is gather up both of these and just see which one looks better but this both of them should look good with this point d'esprit here it's doubled right now so it looks a little off speaking of doubled actually this you cut two of this and you encase the lace in between the layers so like let me just show you on Felicity's cap here. So this lace, basically you put right sides together of these with the lace in between them, inside the right sides together, and already gathered, obviously. And then you can just sew that seam on the machine, if you're doing this by machine, and then turn it right sides out. Then on one of the layers, the outermost layer ideally, you put the gathered up cap right here, there, and then you just fold down the other layer over that seam and stitch that down. So honestly, most of this seems like it can probably be done by machine if I can, you know, do it while I'm at home. So I now have the lace that has been encased within the two layers of the band here. And I also have the cap portion or the call portion, I guess, that has been gathered up on the machine. And now I'm going to set this gathered edge to one of these edges, the exterior edge. I think the lace is honestly almost the same on both sides. I don't know. I'll find which one's the better side and that will be the exterior and it will just be right sides together, you know, like this and then it will turn outwards like that and then this other one will have a little fold on the edge like that and then encase that seam there. So very slight change of plans. I did decide that I should probably do the channel first so that I know where the edges match up from the call to the band. So yeah, I have sewn my channel. I just folded it twice and sewed it on the machine and then elastic will get threaded in there. So it is already nearly done. I think it's looking really, really awesome. The only thing that has to happen now is the inside of this has to be stitched down by hand. So that's just gonna be whip stitched down in place. And I'm debating about taking it with me tomorrow to do that since I should have already gone to bed tonight. But the back is really cute. I just threaded some little narrow elastic through the channel here and then stitched across the edges. You're not even gonna see it because it's all mixed in with the net. But yeah, I mean, here's this one and here's this one so I think I could have gone even more curvy here maybe even a little wider on the band but I think they're pretty darn close so yeah I decided that since it was only going to take 10 minutes I would just go ahead and stitch that down so it is just whip stitched down in there 
looks nice from the outside and looks just like a giant version of Felicity's little cap. So hopefully I made everything right. I really won't know until I actually do my hair. So I will see you on Sunday when I put this all on. I have Felicity all on. I actually wound up having to do my Joe wig that I've also used in Ragtime because the wig that I ordered from Amazon was even farther from her hair color than my like hair dye color right now. So hopefully this works. The one thing about this wig is that it is honestly really heavy and so I'm a little worried about how this will be since I am now wearing this to Comic-Con today. But I think that the outfit looks pretty right and I will definitely show you a lot more footage later today of me wearing this outfit and then there will also be footage in the Comic-Con video which again don't know which one is coming out first so maybe you've already seen that. So yeah here is Felicity all done. editing Rebecca here. I realized that I forgot to film an outro for this video. That is the problem with filming two videos concurrently since I was filming this Felicity vlog at the same time as the Emerald City Comic Con vlog. Filmed that outro, forgot to film this outro. Obviously there wasn't a lot of like finished footage for this dress because there just isn't a lot of space like at Emerald City Comic Con to take pictures and video and all of that sort of stuff so I do hope to be doing like an actual photo shoot at some point soon for this. It just wasn't soon enough to make it into this video. So do be sure that you check my Instagram which is also at Lady Rebecca Fashions where I post every day because once I do do that photo shoot there will be a lot more pictures and stuff of Felicity that will show up in that Instagram that weren't able to make it into this video. But if you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays. But as I said, I do post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me there at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I'd also like to take this time to thank all of my absolutely wonderful patrons without whom I could not be producing all of this content. So thank you patrons so so much, especially those of you at the Romantic, Victorian, and Edwardian tiers who include Sharon, Julie, Mirage, Audra, Emily, Jean, Kim, Linda, Maria, Sarah, Tiffany, Denise, Liz, Elizabeth, Jesse, and Kimberly, who I actually was able to just meet at Comic-Con, which was really cool. So again, thank you all so, so much for all of your support, and thank you all for joining me and watching me on this channel. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!